Okay, this is March 9th, 2011, and we are at the Norfolk National Fish Hatchery in Norfolk, Arkansas. This is the office building, and these are some of the raceways where they raise the trout that get stocked into the White River. Get a little close up there. And of course, we see kids having a good time. And I thought it would be interesting to everybody to just know a little bit about the hatchery, how it operates, and we will go and introduce you to some folks here in just a minute. And now I'm going to introduce you to Craig Eaton. He is the project leader for the Norfolk Federal Fish Hatchery, which is operated by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Hi, Craig. Hi. And uh, he's going to give us a tour of the hatchery facilities, tell us how everything works, and uh, give us lots of really cool information. So, Craig, I'm going to turn it over to you. Say hi to the folks. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you, and this is Norfolk National Fish Hatchery. We're run by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Region 4. Uh, this hatchery is the largest trout-producing federal fish hatchery in the nation. We produce on terms of like uh, pretty close to 2 million rainbow trout a year at various sizes that we delivered. Uh, work, we work hand in hand very closely with the Arkansas Game and Fish people. Um, they, uh, they are what makes this whole program in the White River Basin and, uh, operate and, and do as good as it does now. Great. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> so, show us, so show us what you do. Show us the fish. Start with the... Yeah, we'll go inside. We'll start from the egg stage and then we'll start. The first step here I wanted to bring you to uh, where it all starts here at the hatchery is our uh, egg jars or egg hatching. Uh, we get our eggs from what we call broodstock hatcheries. And broodstock hatcheries, they're the mom and dads. And what uh, what they do is mainly at broodstock hatcheries, they, uh, they create the eggs. And when the eggs get to the eye stage, they ship them to hatcheries like ourselves. We're, we're a, considered a grow-out hatchery. So we get them at the eye stage, so where you can see little eyes and then little eggs. That's, that's the stage of life. I mean, you can ship them all over the world. In fact, they do ship them all over the world. Uh, we get about, every shipment, we get about like 300,000 eggs, maybe sometimes in, uh, every other month. So that's really interesting. I, I thought that at one time uh, we had brood stock here. Is that not true? We did have brood stock here, but when you raise brood stock, you have to keep at least four years of brood stock on hand, and each one takes up a raceway out here, so it, it's, it's that balancing act of whether you want to raise more fish or do you want to have more brood stock. And so that's why the Fish and Wildlife Service went to brood stock hatcheries, so they just have the adult fish on station and don't have to worry about raising the little guys, at this station we raise them from the egg stage all the way to 11 inches, and then we release it. Okay. So that's um, more convenient for, for us to have it that way. We can raise more fish that way. Okay. So explain to me these tanks that I'm going to zoom in on. Each one of these egg tanks have approximately 200 to 250,000 eggs in them. And like, so we get up the egg stage. Right now, at this stage, you can see some that are actually hatched. And once they get hatched, they're called uh, sack fry or alevin, A-L-A-V-I-N. And what, out in the wild, they would still be in the gravel at this stage and they would be absorbing that yolk sac. And once they absorb that yolk sac, that cues them to start emerging up through the gravel and start looking to forage and competing on the insects and stuff there. Anyway. The river or the pond or the lake. Okay, that is really neat. And then, what do they swim up the top of this tank or what? No, they actually, come out here? Or how do you get them for this? Actually, we, we will dump them out into where, where I'm going to take you next. But right now, these ones right here, they are not dead eggs. These are eggs that were not fertilized, so they can't be dead if they weren't alive, right? Right. So that, and the reason why it moves like this is a lot of times fungus will attach to these, 
dead eggs right here. And fungus have little uh, shooters or like a tomato plant. Tomato plant has vines and stuff. Uh, fungus will, if it's, if it's dead water, it'll, it'll go into a live egg and end up killing the egg. So if you keep it moving like that, that'll keep the fungus from uh, spreading out and killing the, the live egg. Oh, okay. And so how many eggs are in this tank we're looking at right now? Somewhere between 200 and 250,000. Wow, okay. And we have three of them right now. Right? So we're doing it. We're moving out a little bit, and yeah. there are currently three tanks operating. So, what is, I mean, for the eggs, what is your survival rate? I mean, how many of these eggs actually wind up hatching in the trout? Uh, we get about 90%, from what we get shipped here, 90% of them will actually hatch. And then from the hatch stage to the fry stage, uh, that would be probably another 90%. So you lose 10% at that point. Okay, so that's actually a really high success rate, much higher than you find in nature, I imagine. Oh, yeah. In, in nature, you're looking at instead of a 90% hatch rate, you're looking at more like a 40, 30, or 40% hatch rate. Yes. And then once they emerge up through the gravel, Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they got to deal with predators. Here, they don't deal with the predators until they go outside, and then they may deal with the uh, bird predators and raccoons and things like that. Well, that's a really interesting point for people who think that, you know, the hatcheries may not be that necessary because nature basically could not even come close to keeping up the pace. That's correct. Okay, so that's very interesting. Okay, for, from the egg jar stage, we bring, them, we bring the whole egg jar out there and everything, and then we dump them into these trays. Okay. And like I said, at this stage, they're called sack fry. And out in the wild, yeah. They're little sack fry. And you dump those directly out of the tanks that we just saw. Right? And, yeah, those are called egg jars, and we, bring, we dump them in here. And they're absorbing their yolk sac at this point. We're not feeding them at this point until they absorb the yolk sac. Oh, okay. Look at that. That is so good. That makes them focus. Here we go. So how many do you think are in here? In these raceways, average? In this one raceway, there's probably somewhere between 50 to 100,000 down. Okay. See, now we can go to the other ones where they absorb the yolk sac. Yeah, we're still on. Okay, so now I want to show you after they absorb their yolk sac what they look like and they're in another raceway here, so follow me. Okay. Okay, after they absorb their yolk sacs, that's when they initially start feeding. And we feed these guys once every hour. And this is what they look like. Pretty much water uh, temperature controlled. The warmer the water, the faster they uh, will absorb the yolk sac and, and uh, actually start growing and stuff like that. So the colder it is, the longer it takes. Uh, right now, when we get to this stage, this is the kind of feed that we're talking about. It's, it's almost in powdery form. And this feed is made up of fish meal and, and different uh, vitamins and minerals. It's, it's all proprietary information, so we don't exactly know what all is in there, but the fish seem to like it, they grow well at it. But if you don't keep this fish, this food available to the fish whenever they are ready to eat it, what happens is they never learn to eat it, they'll just starve to death. Really? And so that's why we feed them at least once an hour every, every, every day. Enough. I think there's 20 raceways that we have here, and there's two 
four per raceway, so there's 80, 80 of these crops that we have that we can put fish in. Okay. And do you usually keep the production about the same year round? Yes. Like a number of quantity? Yes. You do. Okay. It's a continual thing. We're always getting eggs in, eggs are hatchy, we're putting them out here. And then when they get big enough, uh, we'll remove this uh, stainless steel tank and then put them down into this tank, which I'll show you some over here, and raise them up to about four inches and then we'll transfer them outside. So this whole thing is just a continual patch, move, grow, feed, grow, move. <laughs> And, and then, then it gets to the, well, when we go outside, I'll show you, then we'll, we'll get to the delivery station. 